Yesterday, Blackmagic announced their successor to the original Pocket Cinema Camera, the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, with the kind of face only a mother could love. But neither the fact that it is the long-awaited successor to a camera with a cult following, nor that I personally don't find the industrial design electrifying, is not what makes this camera interesting. What makes it interesting is that Blackmagic has essentially wrapped a sensor and lens mount into a very capable 4K recording monitor, shaped like a hybrid camera, layered on top of it by far the most accessible video camera user interface on the market, added in for free the studio version of their Hollywood level color grading effects and rapidly dramatically improving NLE DaVinci Resolve, and at $1295, priced at somewhere between one-half and one-fifth that of its nearest competitors, hybrid and dedicated cameras alike. Think the Panasonic GH5S at $2,500, Sony's FS5 II just announced at $4,800, and the Canon C200 at $7,500. Although there is one thing, one thing above all else I see as a missed opportunity that leaves it vulnerable, but hold that thought. In fact, the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K's Micro Four Thirds sensor bigger than the sensor found in the original, reads like an uprated version of the sensor in Panasonic's GH5S, beginning with dual native ISO up to 25,600, uh, DCI 4K up to 60 frames per second, and 13 stops of dynamic range. Its ability to record 10-bit ProRes and 12-bit RAW internally to an SD UHS-2 or CFast card puts it ahead of just about every sub-$10,000 dedicated video camera out there, at least on that basis, and certainly ahead of any other hybrid on the market which, again, is what this is given its form factor and an actual shutter release. Come to think of it, the number and location of those three top buttons uh, for ISO, white balance, and in a twist, shutter speed also remind me of Panasonic's flagship hybrids. The Pocket Cinema Camera 4K now has autofocus, though to be fair, at this point, we don't know which lenses will work with it, nor how good that autofocus will actually be. But what is less unclear, in fact, what is perfectly clear, is its 5-inch touch interface rear panel. It is revelatory. Combined with Blackmagic's OS, that panel, monitor, we should call it, vaults the new Pocket Cinema Camera 4K to the very top of hybrid software interface design. Now, two years ago, I called Blackmagic's OS the best UX out there among dedicated video cameras. I thought it the video equivalent of Hasselblad's stills camera interface. When the Pocket Cinema 4K is released later this year, barring any extraordinary reimagining of the user experience by someone else in the interim, it will simply make everything else in the hybrid space look archaic. I mean, it already does. Then there's this. With that touch monitor, a USB-C port that allows you to record directly to an external SSD, and built-in mini XLR, the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K promises to be smaller and lighter than just about any other rigged setup out there, dedicated camera or not. You'd be hard pressed, for example, to find a more compact foundation for multi-camera shoots. Though, if you're a vlogger, the inability to flip the screen is a drawback. You can, of course, add an external monitor via the full-size HDMI port, but that diminishes the size and cost advantage. And then again, if you're vlogging, I can't imagine you'd need or want the kind of post-production flexibility this camera is designed to offer anyway. Now, with all of this said, the one thing the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K does not have that I am quite certain the industry is moving towards in hybrids, a day of reckoning, if you'd like, is also the single biggest remaining advantage of dedicated cameras, at least in my book or for people like me, which is internal neutral density filters. If this camera had that one additional feature at this price, I suspect it would gut the market. The lack of in-body image stabilization or an EVF notwithstanding. That's what I think, anyway. Though a lot can happen in the half year or so until the camera starts shipping. We will see soon enough. That's it for now. 
If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. Please consider supporting our work by using our affiliate links or even making a direct contribution via the PayPal link in the show more section below. As always, we thank you for it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.